Today we're going to talk about computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing fundamentals and some of the basics of the process. So if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing and let's go ahead and get on with the video. Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Today we are going to dig into some computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing fundamentals. This is the first video of a video series where I start with the basics of going from concept all the way through design to manufacturing and the final product to give a basic understanding of the end-to-end -end process it takes to use computers to design real-world products. I break the computer-aided design and manufacturing process down into a couple of what I would consider key steps. The first step in the process is simply conceptualizing what it is that you want to design and manufacture. So this can be done in a myriad of ways. Sometimes I use a pad and paper, kind of sketch things out and draw out things. Sometimes I start with an illustration, maybe in a vector program or some sort of other uh, photo manipulation program. And then there are other times where I actually start with a concept in the CAD program itself because, you know, I'm just batting around some ideas, but I need a little bit more precision and accuracy in some of the work that I'm doing. So first step, concept. Next step in the computer-aided design and manufacturing process is the actual CAD component. That's where you take the concept and you move into a computer-based program to do the modeling of the thing that you want to make. So I use Fusion 360 as my CAD program. There are other CAD programs out there on the market like Autodesk, Inventor, Rhino, a variety of other things like this. But most modern computer-aided design packages allow you to model your design in both a two-dimensional and a three-dimensional space to give you some sense of what the design is going to look like in that 3D real kind of world aspect of the design. I'm not going to dive deep into the CAD side of the design process here today. I have created videos in the past showing how to take concept to design in short little compact videos and I will link those above and below if you are interested in them. The next step in the process once you have your physical design is you need to move into the computer aided manufacturing side of the process. So the CAM process is where we take the model, the 3D design, and we start turning into something that a machine can manufacture. Now this varies for the different types of manufacturing that you could potentially do. So the two fundamental forms of manufacturing that I discuss here on this channel are additive manufacturing via 3D printers and subtractive manufacturing via a CNC machine or a computer numeric control. So I've recently upgraded my CNC arsenal with the Onefinity uh, CNC machine, which is behind me. And so I formerly had an X-Carve, and prior to that I had a Shape Oco. So I've been doing CNC work for a long time. In the process of doing all that work, I did get into 3D printing as well. So I have my 3D printing army over there in the vertical cabinet, which I've talked about before. Both of the CNC and the 3D printers use the same basic CAM process, although the mechanisms that you use to get the model from concept to reality with 3D printers and CNCs do vary dramatically. With a CNC machine, you have to take the model and generate what are known as toolpaths to turn the model's geometry into geometry that a CNC can interpret and turn into motions to subtract the material. With a 3D printer, in turn, you actually use a slicer to take that 3D geometry and turn it into the toolpath that the printer could then turn around and build the model from. The process of slicing your model is a lot more simplified than the process of generating toolpaths for a CNC machine. CNC toolpaths have a lot of variance to them, they have a lot of nuances, and I will be walking you all through how to create toolpaths for your models in a future video segment. I will not likely cover the slicing operations in this video series. I have, again, done videos about that before in the past, and there's plenty of material out there on the internet to show how to do slicing. Once you have your tool pass or your slice model, then the process of CAM moves into the actual 
reproduction of your model via subtractive or additive manufacturing. And so the way to do that is you actually post-process your tool pass or your slicer into what is known as G-code. G-code is the language that the machines use to interpret what you intend the machine to do into physical motion. And so you will have a controller that takes that G-code, interprets it, and then instructs the machines, usually stepper motors, for our hobbyist grade machines to create linear motion either in the additive manner or in the subtractive manner. So once you execute the G-code in the machine, the machine produces the model based on what the computer control told it to do. Now this process is usually not without error, I would say. I've had much greater success 3D printing and accurately reproducing models than I have in CNC. As I've mentioned, CNC tool paths are a little bit more complicated than slicing and 3D printing, so I will have a future video segment about that specifically to kind of get the basics out of the way. So all right, once the model is reproduced, generally you move into some sort of finishing mode for the manufacturing process for CNC work. If you're working with you know, wood, then that amounts to a little bit of sanding, maybe some uh, finishing with some uh, polyurethane or something like this for 3D printing. Generally, I don't finish my 3D prints. They look pretty good right off the print bed, but there are many people who do fill some of the gaps in, sand them, and then paint them a variety of different colors. And so you certainly have that option. All right, well, that was a rapid introduction to the end-to-end -end process of going from concept to actual physical product using the CAD and CAM processes. So just to recap a little bit, you go from concept into the CAD side where you design your model. You go from CAD into the CAM side where you take the model Model and you turn it into something that a computer can instruct a machine to generate and then you actually send that to a machine in an execute operation right and then once it's executed then you move into the final finishing mode whatever it is that you want to do understanding the overall workflow and end from concept to final finishing of your product will allow you to become more efficient and more effective over time with each one of the individual steps as you think in advance as I'm doing something in maybe the 3D modeling space for CAD, how is that going to be interpreted by the CAM side and how hard is this machined part going to be to manufacture? Especially when you're doing CNC operations, it's important to understand how the cutter and the bit are going to be influenced by your geometry. And then when you're doing 3D printing, things like overhangs and holes and bridges are very complicated and very difficult to 3D print. So having that in the back of your mind about what's going to happen on the physical side during the design process will allow you to create parts that are more manufacturable in the end and allow the process of the manufacturing to go more smoothly and easier as you move into the CAD side. All right, well, that was a video. I hope you enjoyed it. So we started with the concept. We move into CAD, CAM, executing the CAM operations and move into final finishing. That is the basic workflow for pretty much any digital manufacturing, whether you're doing additive via 3D printer or whether you're doing subtractive via something like a CNC. So in my next video, I am going to focus in on the CNC machine and talk about the different parts of the machine. And so you can understand when people say stepper motors or they're talking about the gantry or they're talking about the wasteboard, what do those parts really mean and what are they used for? And then following that video, we're gonna dive into tool paths and give you a basic understanding of the different type of tool paths you can use to have the CNC machine do its bidding for you. So I think this is going to be an exciting video series. Look forward to it. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing, ringing that bell. Very important these days. And thank you for watching. Thank you for getting this far. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please consider doing so. That's where I post pictures of projects like this that become future videos. All right. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for getting this far. And don't forget to be inspired. Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Roof Guru. Thank you so much for watching. So today we are gonna go through the introduction to computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing. Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Roof Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Today we're gonna start a video series on <coughs> So if you like this type of content,
please consider subscribing, ringing that bell, very important these days. And let's go ahead and get started with, with what? So if you like this type of content, I do it regularly on this channel. And in fact, I have some, I don't know what I'm gonna say, nope. Today, we're gonna go through some computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing fundamentals and basics. I do this type of content on the channel frequently, so if you like it, please consider subscribing. Let's go ahead and get Today we're going to talk about computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing. I do this type of content on this channel pretty regularly, so if you like this type of content, please <clears throat> It's the internet gods telling me that I shouldn't ask people to subscribe. 